billion dollars in the last three months. There she is. And a brand new NBC Marist poll, Heller now has a two point lead over Rosen, 46 among likely voters to her, 44. Anyway, however, a real clear politics average of the most recent polls show Rosen with a two point edge over Heller. So this is back and forth. Meanwhile, in Texas, a deep red state, of course, U.S. Congressman Beto O'Rourke is running a surprisingly, there he is, competitive race against the somewhat unliked incumbent Ted Cruz. A new ad out by a famous director takes Cruz to task for supporting President Trump. Let's watch this. Somebody left something on my door the other day. Is it Ted Cruz, toughest Texas? <laughs> I mean, come on. If somebody called my wife a dog and said my daddy was in on the Kennedy assassination, I wouldn't be kissing their ass. You stick a finger in their chest and give them a few choice words. Or you drag their ass out by the woodshed and kick their ass. For the latest, I'm joined by Ron Ross, the editor of the Nevada Independent, and Abby Livingston, the Washington Bureau Chief for the Great Texas Tribune newspaper. Uh, John, let's start with Nevada. It seems to me that Jackie Rosen has to win, or the Democrats are not going to pick up the net two seats to take control of the Senate. It's the best bet they got. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of folks in Washington, uh, Chris, who have thought that Heller was a dead duck for a long time because he apparently is trying to lose this race and not succeeding by do yeah. taking every position he can on repealing Obamacare, by just uh, getting caught on tape saying foolish things, by having a campaign that really has not been that great and really has only had one strategy, Chris, which is to be in love with Trump and then be in love with Kavanaugh, changing how he was before, to try to hope that the base uh, will turn out, as they often do in midterms, and especially in Nevada, Democrats don't do well here, and he can hold out. As you mentioned, the polling has gone back and forth. It's been a margin of error race uh, all year long, and I think Democrats are really worried, both here and nationally, that Heller, who has never lost a race, can hold on. You know, I think about Nevada almost from the cartoon view. I, I tell people, you know, it's the one state where you meet the union workers. You, you meet the whole time you're in Vegas, for example, in Clark County, you're meeting union people. They're not people behind some factory line somewhere. They're waiting your table, their casino, uh, their, uh, what do you call them, uh, uh, croupiers or whatever, their pit bosses. They're all over the place, union people. And then you have that other thing, that rural Mormon LDS culture that's also out there. How do you measure one against the other? There's sort of the big city Vegas crowd, which is a lot of women workers, union workers are women on the left, sort of, in terms of practicality. And then you have that quiet, more rural Mormon crowd. What's the power? Because, you know, because, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, Chris, Harry you, Reed you get was Nevada, both. You've been out here. You, You've talked to all these folks, right? You've been in the casinos. That vote is crucial. That that culinary worker vote, they represent 50,000 or so folks. That's what helped Harry Reid survive in a midterm, even though his numbers were as terrible as Heller. And then you talk about rural Nevada. They love Trump out there. They want to hang Democrats in effigy. They're going to vote in huge numbers for Heller. But that's only about 15 to 18 percent of the vote. So you're really threading a needle there to try to get the landslide there to make up for what you're going to lose in Clark County. And that makes Reno and Washoe County the swing county where if the Democrats can at least hold their, their own there, they should win. But that, that's exactly Nevada. You said it's essentially two states. It's really three with the rural southern yeah. Nevada and then Reno, which, which is where the swing voters really yeah. are. And Katie Turry's up there today with you. Anyway, in an interview with NBC's Lester Holt, Senator Cruz of Texas was asked about O'Rourke's challenge to him. Here's what Cruz had to say. I think it's the sign of the times nationally that, that the extreme left, they're really angry and they're energized. And we're seeing that in Texas. Well, that's on the roof here. <laughs> Abby, what do you make of this race? I've been sensing that, that, uh, uh, that, uh, but O'Rourke has got more guts than most people have ever had in their life. He's taken on a guy that nobody could beat, and yet he's fallen. He's a little bit behind him, and he's sort of stuck there. It seems like the race is stabilized with him trailing by about five points, and that five points is a huge amount to make up in a state as populous as Texas. I can say I've been covering politics in Texas for a long time, and I've lived it as a kid, and I've never seen a race like this before. What could turn it? What, what, because I say he seems to be so damn attractive as a candidate. The Kennedy connections obviously been mentioned. He's getting out the people in the crowds. How do you translate those crowds to voters in the booth? 
Well, what I do wonder when we look at these polls, there's... Look at these crowds. This is the people in most states would die for this kind of enthusiasm. I've been to these events. It feels like New Hampshire a week out before a presidential primary. I think what it will take is if we look back at the Virginia gubernatorial race last year, it seemed neck and neck between the Republican and Democrat, and the Republican actually lost by nine points. So my question is, can the polling detect this kind of enthusiasm? And that's, to me, the path for him, along with consolidating the Hispanic vote. If he gets a turnout on the Democratic side consistent with a presidential year, that wouldn't even be enough, though. He has to get better than that, doesn't he? Absolutely. Hillary Clinton lost Texas by nine points, which was a significant step forward for Democrats. But it's really hard to underscore how difficult this can be. But again, I've never seen anything like this, and I can imagine stranger things have happened in American politics. Why does Cruz, he seems like an unpopular sort of personality to most of us, so look at him, he's not a charmer by any means. He's arrogant. He used to say it when he was in law school, he wouldn't study with the kids who went to Penn. You know, they had to go to Yale or Harvard or Princeton. Uh, he's arrogant. And maybe that's some people like arrogant. How about the, the Hispanic vote, the Latino vote? Uh, how does he get 30 some percent? How did that happen? Well, I think one thing to remember is the name Cruz is Hispanic. And in South Texas, in the Rio Grande Valley, your last name is extremely important among those Hispanic voters. And while Beto has a Spanish nickname, his last name is Irish. And so that is one thing. But also the Hispanic voting bloc in Texas is not monolithic. There is a, a anti-abortion group in, within that sector. Sure, I understand that. And so it's, it's, Texas is just so complex, and sometimes it's just not black or white. Well, this is a hell of a race. This may be the number one race in the country. Uh, John Ralston, thank you, sir. Your reporting is fantastic. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.